Adobe RGB. What is it? Why is it even a thing? Why uh, do monitor companies include it? And is it something that you should be looking for when purchasing a new display? Well, like a lot of things in life, there is a longer, more nuanced uh, answer to that question, which I'll get to in a moment. But the short and sweet answer is that Adobe RGB is a color space that is included in monitors that are you know, sold and marketed to designers and photographers because Adobe RGB is a better color space for printing. And by printing, I mainly mean four color process printing, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And Adobe RGB is better because it does a better job of displaying on screen the full range of colors that are available and that can be printed when using CMYK or a photo printer uh, of your own as well. But the real question, I think the actual question that people really want to know is, does it matter? Back in the early 1990s, I bet some of you uh, may remember, back in the early 1990s, Apple was practically bankrupt and most people, uh, except, you know, the weird ones, most people were using PCs. Most people were using, you know, Microsoft Windows. And back then there was a need because there were so many different companies making displays and computers. There was some need for standardization. There needed to be a consistent standard color space with all these different displays that were being made. So sRGB came along and sRGB quickly took off. sRGB ended up being used everywhere. But there was a problem with sRGB and that problem was in uh, was when printing, when creating prints, when printing using a four color print process. The problem was that sRGB was oftentimes smaller than the color gamut supported by uh, printers and paper. And this was obviously rather frustrating at the time for designers and photographers because they could not see on screen the same range of colors that their printer was capable of creating. So they would get inconsistent results. So Adobe came along with a solution and they created their own color gamut named Adobe RGB. You can see that Adobe RGB is about 35% larger than sRGB. And it's also just large enough to contain and to display the range of colors available in CMYK. Now, technically speaking, and just to clarify, the CMYK shape that you see here is not the same for all printers and papers. Its shape changes and the range of colors change depending on the type of printer that you're using and the type of paper you're printing on. So this is great, right? I mean, this is definitely an improvement, but what's interesting is that Adobe RGB never really caught on. It never went beyond the design and photography and print world. It pretty much just stayed in that world, even though Adobe RGB was a bigger, you know, color space, bigger and better than sRGB. It had more colors. I guess display manufacturers and PC manufacturers, maybe they looked at it and thought, eh, you know, the average person probably doesn't care. They're perfectly happy with millions of colors. Why would they ever want billions of colors? Like, you know, no thanks. We're going to stick to sRGB. So fast forward to the early 2010s. And now we have smartphones. We have tablets. We have more screen types than we've ever had before. Definitely more than we had back in the 1990s. And there was an effort underway at that time to improve the user experience and provide you know more colors richer more vibrant colors for games and for app developers and you know everyone else so a new color space was needed something bigger and better than srgb this one named p3 based on the color space of digital theatrical projection otherwise known as dci p3 Display P3 is actually just a little bit smaller than Adobe RGB, and it's also rotated slightly. So the range of hues that are supported by Display P3 are different than Adobe RGB. Display P3 includes slightly richer oranges and reds, whereas Adobe RGB supports slightly richer and more vibrant blues and greens. And that sliver of difference between the two is the reason why Adobe RGB continues to be used. I mean, there was a real chance and opportunity here. This is kind of the frustrating thing about all of this is that after all these years, there was an opportunity there to just make P3 a little bit larger so that it was bigger than Adobe RGB, it was bigger than sRGB, and it was the largest color space that you could get on a computer display. But because it was modeled after DCI-P3, well, we ended up with something that's 
kind of similar and is more or less the same as Adobe RGB, but slightly different. And the colors that it does not include could actually be somewhat meaningful to certain photographers, especially if you do uh, like landscape photography, outdoor photography, seascape photography, anything involving rich, vibrant blues and greens. Well, if those are colors you want and you want to print in those colors, Display P3, even the most modern new screen is not going to be able to display the same rich, vibrant hues of blues and greens that a display running Adobe RGB would be capable of producing. So this is why Adobe RGB continues to be the preferred color space for editing photos, because it is just a little bit larger than Display P3. It encompasses a broader range of hues than Display P3. Again, not a lot, but a little bit more. And it's also the preferred file type for CMYK printing. So if you were to send like a photo off to be printed someplace like Whitewall or elsewhere, you could save it in Adobe RGB, send it to them, and they would have no trouble working with it at all because they've been working with Adobe RGB files since you know, the late 1990s. It's been a long time. So there's not a clean and simple answer to this question of whether Adobe RGB is truly necessary for, for you and the type of work you do and the type of photography you do. But as you can see here, because Adobe RGB and Display P3 are so similar, the odds are and the and the times in which you will have a color in an image that is um, supported by Adobe RGB but not by Display P3 may not happen that often and you may not see any difference at all with how you edit your images. Maybe you don't even use like rich, vibrant colors when you edit your images. Like if you tend to like desaturate things a little bit, make them a little more filmic, well, your images would be, you know, rendered exactly the same in Adobe RGB and P3 and maybe even sRGB for that matter. You know, a lot of times uh, people don't push the saturation that far. They don't increase their vibrance so far that, you know, the colors extend beyond the range of sRGB. So for me, the reason why I edit my raw photography in Adobe RGB and I have a display that supports it is because then I know that I am using a display that has the broadest range of hues possible. And if I send that photo off to be printed, I should get good, consistent results when doing so. It's really that simple. And until the day comes when there's another color space, maybe someday we'll have like a pro photo RGB display that you know includes almost the entire visible spectrum. Wouldn't that be awesome? Until that day comes, Adobe RGB hangs on and Adobe RGB is still the preferred color space to be using when you're editing photos. So I hope that was helpful. I hope I answered your questions. I tried to keep it as simple and as straightforward as possible. If I did, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would appreciate it. Feel free to leave a comment. You can also reach out to me directly as well. You'll find my email address in the video description down below. That's it for me, everyone. Thanks so much for asking questions. I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any. And that's it for me. Uh, it's the weekend, it's Friday, and uh, I'm out. See you next time.